Okay, so um, today we are going to discuss uh, uh, social choice and, um, and voting, uh, voting theory. Okay, so this is a material that you will find uh, in the book of uh, Maskell and Winston and Green uh, in chapter 21 or in uh, Easley and Kleinberg. So in Maskell, uh, you will find a more mathematical uh, treatment. So what is the problem? So uh, the problem is uh, uh, that we want to uh, go from uh, the individual to a society and to see whether we can define the preferences of a society uh, from the preferences of the individuals. So we have uh, uh, S uh, alternatives. You can think of them as different candidates for uh, president and, uh, and individuals, each of which uh, has a rational preference over these uh, individuals. So which means it is complete and uh, transitive. So, and uh, we define a social choice rule is a, a, a rule that is a function of all the preferences of individuals. And that gives us a, a preference for a, a society as a whole, okay? And the main question we are going to discuss is whether there is any social choice rule uh, that satisfies some minimal requirement. Okay, so let me make uh, uh, some examples. So uh, there are indeed many uh, social choice rules, uh, and uh, these are essentially used uh, in the elec in elections. And so, for example, uh, uh, you have uh, uh, one is plurality voting. Uh, so when we go and vote, uh, then we just uh, cast uh, one vote uh, for uh, uh, our preferred candidate, our top uh, uh, candidate, okay? So for example, in this example, uh, uh, which is taken from this uh, paper of the French election uh, in 2002, uh, I mean, this is just uh, uh, made up and, uh, and the idea was that there were three candidates and, uh, and essentially 30% of the people, if 30% of the French people, French voters uh, had uh, this preference, 36, and uh, this other preference, uh, and 34, and this other preference, then plurality voting would have uh, ended up by uh, choosing uh, Chirac over Le Pen over uh, Jospin. No? Because just you sum up, and you see that, uh, uh, well, Chirac will get 36% uh, of the votes, uh, Le Pen 34% uh, of the votes, and Jospin 30% of the votes. However, you can think of a different uh, uh, social choice rule, which is uh, called uh, board accounts. And uh, uh, in border county, you just give two votes uh, to the best and one vote uh, uh, to the second and no vote for the third, okay? So if you do the calculation, it's a little bit more complicated here, but you see that, uh, well, again, in this case, uh, Chirac will have uh, 36 uh, times two plus 30, and uh, it will get more votes than uh, Jospin and Le Pen. But you see that already using this, row, uh, this uh, um, rule, the order between Jospin and Le Pen has changed between the uh, previous one. Yet another rule that you can consider is the one of uh, uh, majority voting. You pick uh, uh, two candidates and uh, you make a, 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 an election on just this pair of candidates, okay? And if you do so, then uh, you will find that, uh, well, the, with respect to uh, Jospin and Chirac, well, there are 30% plus 34% uh, of the people who prefer Jospin to Chirac, and uh, only 36% that prefer Chirac to Jospin. So Jospin, uh, in a pairwise majority voting, would win against Chirac. Now you can see also that Chirac will also win against uh, uh, Le Pen, 
because uh, uh, because essentially uh, these people prefer Chirac to Le Pen, but also these people prefer Chirac to, to Le Pen. And so you end up with a different uh, uh, preference ordering for the majority, okay? So there is another, uh, so, 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 yeah, please. Oh. So I have some, uh, sorry, okay. So, um, so depending on which uh, um, uh, which voting rule you choose, you end up uh, with a different uh, uh, decision. So which uh, uh, voting rule should one choose? But there are more serious problems because essentially, uh, if you take, uh, for example, pairwise majority uh, 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 problem uh, rule, then uh, uh, this is uh, the problem that the majority may not be transitive. So this is another example of an election. And uh, you, you may see that uh, in this election, we have 44% of the people uh, that prefer uh, Gore to Bush to Nader, 46% that prefer Bush to Nader to Gore, and 10% that prefer Nader to Gore to Bush. Then by pairwise majority, you will see that uh, Gore is better than Bush because 54% uh, uh, of the people prefer Gore to Bush. Bush is better than another because uh, there are 44 plus 46%, 86% uh, uh, of the people prefer Bush to another. Uh, but uh, at the same time, also another is better than Gore because uh, there are 46 uh, uh, plus 10, 56 percent of the people prefer another to Gore. And then Gore is better than Bush. So you see that this, uh, the majority um, uh, uh, rule, pairwise majority, is, uh, uh, leads to a non-transitive, non-rational outcome. So, uh, okay, so, but uh, if you take another rule, then uh, you can see that uh, this also has uh, other problems. So another problem in social choice uh, rules uh, is the one that you do not like uh, that your uh, 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 outcome, social outcome, uh, be manipulable. Okay, so let us take an example. Imagine that a society has to choose whether to invest in uh, solar energy or in, in, in gas, okay? So society has to choose uh, what is the energy source that is going to use. And then if 58 of the people have this preference and 42% of the people have this other preference, then uh, the society will choose uh, uh, solar uh, to gas, okay? But then you can say, well, wait, uh, I mean, uh, there is also uh, wind energy, wind turbines that can be used. And then uh, if, you, uh, if you include also this other choice, then uh, now you will see that uh, uh, the 58% of the people that had this preference over solar and gas, split and 48% uh, uh, have this preference where wind uh, uh, is third and 10% uh, uh, have this preference when wind uh, is the best choice, is better than solar and gas. And then uh, uh, in this case, uh, you see that by adding one choice, uh, you end up uh, in the same situation as before but not only, uh, you see that now, uh, depending on how you uh, make uh, your uh, decision, you may end up uh, uh, in a different conclusion. So imagine that uh, you use pairwise, uh, you compare, you let society compare these two options in pairs, then uh, imagine that first uh, consider uh, whether to go for solar or to go for wind. 
And then uh, by the same argument as before, you will find out that uh, a wind is preferred. And then you can consider whether the society will go like to go for the wind or for the gas. Huh? And then uh, by this table, you will see that uh, the majority will prefer gas to wind. But now if you reverse the order of the choices, if you ask uh, first uh, whether uh, the society will prefer solar to gas uh, instead of solar to wind, then you will find that they prefer solar. And then uh, if after this you ask whether they prefer uh, uh, solar to wind, you will end up in wind. So, so you see the outcome of the choice of the society here depends on the order in which uh, uh, you pose the questions, okay? The binary questions. Okay, so um, uh, are there any questions about uh, this? Is everything clear, what we are talking about? Uh, professor, I have a question. Yeah, please. Uh, it's regarding the function of uh, of the different binary relations that we defined as preferences. How could we define such a function? So, uh, from a mathematical you mean, uh, how we can define uh, this function f here? Yes. Okay. So, uh, I mean, these uh, these are three particular. Uh, uh, ways of defining this function. No? So uh, plurality voting. Plurality voting means that uh, you just, uh, that every individual just express uh, one vote for uh, the top candidate, and then you rank the, the votes. Okay, so this okay. is a social preference. Okay. And uh, this board account is another one. <coughs> and majority vote is, uh, is another one. And there are many, many different alternatives, okay? Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, so if there are no other questions, I see there are two- Professor. Uh, Professor. The first slide, yes. I have a question. Yes. It means that they we organize uh, they vote three times. Uh, in this example, you mean? No? In the, the previous one. In the previous one? Okay. Yes. Well, yeah. For instance, okay. this one. Since we have three people, it means that we they organize the they vote three times to make the final choice. No. Well, it means that say uh, you could think. Uh, um, uh, like uh, the following. So instead of when you go and vote, uh, instead of uh, expressing only uh, what is your best preference, best candidate, you just uh, submit uh, the whole uh, preference relation. And then uh, the, the mechanism, the social choice mechanism compares each of these uh, each pair of uh, different alternatives, okay? And okay. Uh, I, I, what the Condorcet paradox uh, implies is that the problem with this is that you may end up uh, with a preference relation that is not transitive. Uh, in this case, it means that people have to fill the form of preference. Yeah. In this, yes, in this case, I mean, this is uh, not, uh, usually uh, used, pairwise uh, majority is not a system that is typically used, but this, this could be a way of also running the elections. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So uh, you know, uh, could you explain uh, how this, excuse me? Yeah. Yeah, so could you explain how this 44, 46, and 10 came? Like, let's say, even, I mean, uh, there are only three alternatives, right? So, how did so I the, came up with these numbers, uh, with this table? Uh, yeah, in this table, how did you come up with x axis? I understand the y axis. There is a, like, I mean, when we vote, we'll be voting between one, two, and three. Yeah. 
so uh, how did you get uh, like we get this uh, x axis in the sense 44 46 and 10 so these uh, these i made it up is uh, i mean it's uh, it's um, is not uh, does not reflect any real situation i'm just saying uh, let's imagine a society where 44% uh, of the people have these preference relations so they prefer uh, this gore to bush and to another 46% percent at these other preference relation and 10% percent okay. at these other preference relation okay i made uh, all these up okay 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 oh, fine fine thanks uh, professor i have another question so does, does that mean that uh, the function that we uh, use as social choice should uh, conserve uh, rationality of the of the output performance relation that would, be, that would be yes i'll come to that this this would be uh, a very nice uh, okay. uh, requirement no yes okay yes okay thank you okay so uh, let me uh, go uh, to uh, the main question that we are going now uh, one of the main questions that we are going to uh, discuss today is it uh, how uh, so is there a, a, a social choice rule that uh, is um, um, that is the best one okay and uh, again uh, we assume that we have an individual size each alternative and we ask uh, uh, whether there is a, a way to aggregate individual preferences into a social choice function that satisfies some reasonable requirement. What are these reasonable requirements? Well, these are uh, 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 these requirements. So the first uh, is that uh, we want uh, that this, prefer this uh, social choice function works uh, whatever are the preferences uh, of the individuals, okay? So this is called unrestricted domain, okay? So whatever preference uh, individuals have, so this, uh, we could be able to extract uh, a social choice preference. So the second thing is rationality. So we want the society uh, to be rational. So uh, we want the social choice rule to be complete uh, and to be transitive, okay? This also looks like a minimal requirement. Also, another requirement that we want uh, is uh, what is called unanimity. And uh, this means that if everybody prefers A to B, then the society should prefer A to B. Okay, so this is, uh, I mean, it's a minimal, uh, say, requirement that we sh should also ask. And uh, the other uh, uh, requirement uh, is what is called independence of uh, irrelevant alternatives, uh, which means that the social choice uh, between A and B should only depend on individual prefer preferences between A and B. Okay, it cannot, be, it cannot depend on uh, uh, what are the preferences between A and another choice uh, C. Okay, because uh, if it is so, then uh, uh, the social choice uh, can be manipulated. Okay, one can uh, fictitiously introduce uh, another option like uh, wind, uh, as we saw, uh, that will uh, turn uh, the choice between A and B the other way around. Okay, okay, so the, the uh, Main result in this uh, is uh, what is called Arrow's Impossibility Theorem. And what uh, Arrow's Impossibility Theorem is that uh, if you look at, uh, 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 if you want a social choice uh, uh, that satisfies all these requirements, uh, well, there is one, and it is uh, essentially dictatorship. Dictatorship is a social choice rule such that you pick one individual and the preference of the society is equal to the preference of this individual. It is clearly uh, 
uh, a preference, uh, a social choice rule uh, that is unrestricted domain. It is it, it has uh, unanimity. Uh, it is rational, and it's independent of irrelevant alternatives. Okay. Of course, uh, this is not uh, a very nice uh, result uh, because, uh, <clears throat> well, um, uh, say we do not think uh, uh, this is a good choice uh, for a democratic society. Uh, but essentially, um, uh, um, so this is why this is called uh, an impossibility theorem. And uh, because if you want to rule out uh, dictatorship, uh, so if you want to impose also another requirement uh, that is called uh, anonymity, which means uh, that uh, the uh, social choice rule should be invariant uh, under any permutation of the individuals, uh, then uh, uh, Arrow's impossibility theorem tells you that uh, uh, there is no such a rule, okay? And uh, of course, uh, uh, if you have uh, only two alternatives, uh, then uh, uh, say pairwise majority works, uh, satisfies uh, all, these, uh, 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 all these requirements, okay? So uh, the problem arises only when you have uh, more than two alternatives. And this is indeed why uh, many political system have uh, uh, evolved into uh, systems uh, where essentially you have only two alternatives between uh, say uh, conservatives and liberals, uh, left and right, uh, only two main parties. Of course, the other choice is to have uh, uh, just a strict alternative to just uh, one choice, but that is not uh, uh, very democratic. Okay, so uh, now, uh, well, if you want to check your understanding, uh, you should be able to uh, understand what is wrong, what, what of this uh, uh, desiderata or this uh, requirement fails uh, in plurality voting, and, uh, and what is wrong with deciding uh, on a complex issue by dividing into uh, binary, uh, 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 binary issues. Okay, so questions. So the uh, let me uh, refer. I, I have a question. Yes, please. Um, are you suggesting that um, in the in choosing a candidate, we should use the binary choosing? over other kind of choices no 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 what i'm saying uh, and uh, this is a mathematical theorem it is a theorem that uh, there is no social choice rule that satisfies uh, all these reasonable requirements so what i'm saying is that uh, if you want to design a, a society, a democratic society that takes a decision in a say, optimal, rational way, then this is just impossible. Okay? okay. So yeah. you have to give up uh, one of these uh, uh, reasonable uh, requirements. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you what's the relation in between a social rule and a binary rule? So a binary rule, I don't know what you mean by a binary rule, but say uh, you mean in this example here, I was saying in, in this uh, problem here, say, uh, I mean, what I mean is uh, you can think uh, of a social choice rule that works like a, a tournament. In a tournament, uh, what you do is you pick, uh, say, one uh, candidate, uh, one alternative, uh, and you compare it to another one. You take the winning uh, 
of these two candidates, of these two alternatives, and you compare it to a third one, and you go on like this. Okay? Yes. So the social rule to which Arrow's theorem refers to is uh, a binary. No, no, choice. it's any, any social, any okay. social choice rule. Of any such a choice. Okay, thank you. So, the, uh, so Arrow's theorem tells you that there is no way in which you can uh, uh, get uh, uh, a, say, a rational uh, uh, social choice out of uh, the rational aggregating uh, the preferences of individuals. Okay, again, uh, let me stress that uh, what I'm doing here is just to summarize uh, what uh, is explained in the uh, record, in the lectures that are uh, uh, pre-recorded and you find on the website. Then I also give, uh, um, you can also find an idea of how you prove this theorem. Okay, other questions? Okay, so if not, uh, uh, let me uh, continue and say, well, uh, this arrow impossibility theorem uh, is really uh, a worst case uh, uh, result. So it tells you that, uh, um, say, however you find uh, a social choice rule, I can find uh, a set of preferences of individuals such that uh, the social choice rule will violate at least one of these uh, um, of these uh, axioms okay, of these de desiderata, uh, unanimity, rationality, etc. Okay. However, uh, you can ask how how bad is the situation uh, typically, and you can ask say, what is the social choice rule, which is uh, least uh, bad, essentially. And uh, there is this result of the group that I'm asking uh, that uh, uh, show that uh, essentially ma majority rule is the least bad. And the idea is that uh, uh, whenever uh, majority, uh, say, um, Whenever some other rule works, then also majority rule works. But uh, uh, so, uh, the, let's say the majority rule in some sense is the one that has the largest uh, domain of applicability, okay? And then you can also ask typically, uh, so what is the probability? If you imagine that you have a random society, so where essentially every individual has a, preference between alternatives, which is just uh, uh, a random uh, uh, permutation of the possible alternatives, you can ask yourself, how bad is this? Okay, how, what is the probability that I pick a set of preferences of individuals such that uh, uh, the, majority, the majority rule is not transitive? And then uh, you can see that, uh, well, uh, as the number of alternatives uh, grows large, uh, the, uh, the probability uh, that you end up uh, in a non-transitive uh, majority uh, uh, also becomes larger and larger, okay? And uh, if you ask a simpler question, so uh, what is the probability that uh, uh, in the uh, in pairwise majority, there is one alternative that uh, is better than all the other alternatives. And this is called uh, a Condorcet winner. Okay, then this probability you can compute it uh, in, a, in this limit of a large random society. And uh, it falls off uh, very, very slowly. So as uh, square root of log s divided by s. So essentially, uh, this tells you that even if uh, majority rule uh, is uh, not perfect, uh, 
Well, in practical case, it, it may be that uh, 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 there is a large chance that it works. Okay. Then uh, uh, the, there is another uh, uh, argument, uh, uh, which is uh, suggested by Amartya Sen, and says that well, this uh, uh, result by Kenetaro is not really a negative result. What this tells you is that uh, if a society has to make uh, a choice between a certain number of alternatives, then the individual preferences do not provide enough information to make this choice, okay? And the idea is that, uh, uh, say, if, uh, if it is really a, a choice uh, for the society as a whole, then, uh, uh, the uh, individuals uh, should uh, maybe uh, um, say interact and uh, share ideas and come to a consensus uh, on uh, what is the um, what is the best choice for society. And this this is uh, what politics uh, politics is. I mean, is building a, a consensus, which is essentially means uh, in, is equivalent to aligning preferences, making the preferences of different people uh, uh, closer to each other. And you can see that, uh, well, uh, this is a paper we did, uh, say, uh, 15 years ago. You can see that uh, if uh, indeed uh, uh, the preferences of individuals are not really independent, but they uh, depend on each other, they, they are correlated, then uh, uh, also in that case, uh, uh, the probability to have a pairwise majority is, uh, uh, can be close to one. Okay, um, and well, and then uh, as, I, as I told you, well, uh, uh, this, this, uh, if you have just two candidates, if you restrict the choice to just two alternatives, then uh, there is no problem, okay? There are other uh, uh, situations where um, uh, the uh, arrow impossibility theorem uh, does not apply. Okay, so uh, the idea is that uh, uh, we may give up the uh, uh, requirement of a restricted domain. Okay. And one idea is that, well, uh, the, uh, in many cases, uh, uh, say, uh, the preferences of individual are, say, uh, can be ranked on a, uh, on a spectrum, okay? So if you think about political opinion, then uh, people will have a, a certain preferred location on the political spectrum between left and right, and uh, their preferences uh, will uh, uh, decrease from the maximum, both towards the left and towards the right, okay? So in other words, if you restrict attention to a single picked preference, what are called a single picked preference, such as these ones, so um, which are preferences uh, where if you put the rank of the alternatives against the alternatives sorted in a particular way, each individual will have uh, just a single pick uh, and then its preferences will decrease both on the left and on the right. So if all individuals uh, have these type of preferences, then uh, what you can show is a result called the median voter theorem that tells you in this case, uh, pairwise majority voting will always be transitive. And the main idea of this result is that, uh, say, if you pick uh, the uh, median voter, so the one uh, whose top choice uh, is, in the, um, is in, in, in the middle, then uh, it is clear that uh, his top preference, uh, um, if you think a little bit about it, so his top preference 
will be preferred with respect to any other preference because say if you take a, a preference which is on the right then uh, there will be more people that prefer uh, this preference uh, here the, these alternatives here to this other alternative then uh, uh, people that uh, prefer the other way around okay so um, uh, there are several other results of uh, this type that tell you that uh, say uh, uh, under some circumstances you can figure out uh, that uh, uh, some uh, um, uh, social choice rule may work. Uh, and in particular, uh, if, uh, uh, um, in particular, the majority, uh, pairwise majority uh, rule is the, is the one that will work more often. Okay, so this is another good time to uh, uh, stop for questions if there are. Are you completely lost? Hello? I have a question, sorry. Um, yes. In reality, how often um, is there an association of a single peak preference system in social choices? Okay, so... Uh, Remember that we are talking about uh, uh, preferences which are uh, of individuals which are not observable, which are, uh, preferences are not observable features of individuals. And uh, uh, so, uh, so on one, on one hand, uh, you, uh, you see a lot of uh, um, um, so you see two things. So, so one thing is you see that uh, uh, in politics uh, setting the agenda, what is the order, what is the priority in which you discuss issues is something that is uh, uh, very important. So this means that uh, um, politicians uh, know about uh, these results uh, very well. And on the other thing, I mean, you also see that there is this uh, tendency of, uh, say, uh, polarization of uh, opinions, okay? So that uh, um, everything is, uh, say, uh, projected uh, into the, on, on the same axis, okay? Whether you are in favor of something, uh, whether you are against something, uh, whether you are somewhere in between, okay? On a political spectrum. So, so this, uh, uh, this is part of uh, the dynamics uh, of uh, 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 politics. I mean, I, I find it really, interesting that uh, say this mathematical result uh, or this uh, mathematical uh, say uh, theorems have a, a consequence uh, in uh, the working of our uh, society and of politics okay and if you think about it uh, they, they are really um, um, very deep results I don't know if I asked, I answered your question, though. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay, so... Sorry, another question. Ah, okay, can you please ex explain unrestricted domain again? So unrestricted domain means that uh, you want a social choice rule that works whatever are the preferences of individuals, okay? Uh, what is wo uh, wrong with border count? Uh, it's uh, also to border, this seems uh, the most logical choice, 
uh, this is a very uh, good question that uh, you can uh, um, uh, so um, so you can uh, uh, see that uh, in many situations in some situation board account uh, may be uh, manipulated so imagine uh, uh, a situation where uh, um, i uh, imagine this situation here okay and i use board account and the choice is uh, Chirac, Jospin, Le Pen, okay? Now, uh, the people uh, uh, who voted uh, for uh, Jospin here, who prefer Jospin to Chirac to Le Pen, they may think, uh, well, okay, so if I really um, uh, give uh, uh these um, uh, votes uh, according to board account uh, i will give one vote to chirac uh, and this will mean that chirac will win so maybe it is better that we misrepresent our preferences and give two votes to jospin one vote to le pen and zero to chirac in this case, uh, if uh, uh, individuals, uh, uh, so if the individuals with this preference uh, misrepresent uh, uh, their preferences, then Jospin will get more votes than Chirac. Okay, so it is in the interest uh, of these people here not to vote according to their preferences. And this is what is called incentive compatibility. So in a society, you want a mechanism for society to work that should not encourage people to cheat or to misrepresent their preferences. By the way, this is what happens all the time in, in voting. You know, for example, uh, uh, in many cases, people uh, do not vote uh, the candidates uh, they prefer because they think uh, the candidate they prefer has no has no uh, uh, has no uh, chances of being elected. Okay, and maybe they work they vote for the second best or for the third best. Okay, but this uh, uh, distorts the preferences of society. Okay, so did I explain you why board account uh, does not work? Okay. Okay, so let me uh, go uh, to another set of uh, uh, problems, uh, which is uh, uh, the one of uh, uh, the wisdom of the crown. Okay, so uh, so the wisdom of the crowd is uh, is a general. Uh, 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 so uh, a, professor, I, yeah. I, have, uh, I have a question. Yes, please. Uh, it, it's about the single picked preferences. So uh, it said that the preferences should have certain order. Yes, exactly. So uh, is that order can be uh, played by the utility function of the preferences that we have? Uh, if it exists. Yes, yes, yes. So, so it 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 can be yes. Uh, it can be represented as uh, in terms of utility functions. Yes, definitely. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let me go back to the wisdom of the crowd. Uh, so the idea uh, is that um, uh, uh, this. Um, way of the social choice uh, rules, uh, these uh, voting uh, um, schemes, uh, what they also allow to do is to aggregate information uh, from different uh, uh, people. Uh, and, and, and so the, 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 um, the aggregated information is wiser than uh, the information that the individuals have. So imagine a situation where society has to make a decision and uh, there is an objective truth. Okay, so think about whether uh, say climate change is a serious threat or not. Okay, 
So this is an objective uh, uh, thing. And if it is a serious uh, threat, uh, then we should do something. If it is not, uh, then we can continue business as usual, okay? Now imagine a situation where uh, the uh, different individuals uh, uh, on this binary choice, uh, whether uh, climate change is true or not, uh, may have uh, different uh, uh, opinions, okay, or, or preferences, uh, because they have different information, okay? Now, if you uh, let them vote, uh, then uh, uh, this voting uh, will aggregate uh, uh, all this information. And, and what you can see is that uh, if uh, the information that uh, each individual has is noisy, but is informative in the sense that uh, there are more people uh, who are likely to have the right information, then if you look at uh, uh, the uh, majority, how the majority will behave, then the majority will uh, also um, uh, reflect uh, what the uh, true information is, okay? Because uh, uh, by the law of large numbers, okay? And uh, so this is uh, uh, why uh, this, so, and we use it uh, uh, many time also when you go to on the internet or uh, say, uh, if we see that something is popular, then it must also be good. Okay, so we uh, associate uh, uh, popularity with the sort of truth of, or, or, or good, okay? Now, there are uh, some situations in which uh, this, uh, uh, the, 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 the crowd may not be that wise uh, just because uh, uh, individuals are rational. Okay, not just because, I mean, of course, if individuals have, uh, uh, say, uh, uh, misbehave or have uh, different uh, preferences, they do not behave rationally, then uh, you can have whatever happens. But even if they are rational, then you can get uh, into an uh, irrational outcome. There are a couple of uh, situations uh, that uh, are discussed. So, so in, this is a one situation that is discussed in the book of Kleinberg. So imagine that you have these three people and they have to, uh, 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 so the game is that uh, each of them uh, picks uh, a ball uh, from uh, uh, an urn, which can be either this one or this one. And, uh, and what they have to do is they, they get this ball, they look at the color, they have this information, what is the color of the ball that they picked. And on the basis of this, uh, what they have to vote uh, is whether the true uh, uh, urn is this one or this one, okay? Now you would say, well, okay, if I pick uh, uh, a black ball, then I should vote for a black ball. For, I should vote for this urn. And if I pick a white ball, then I should, uh, I should uh, 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 vote for this urn, okay? But uh, if you think uh, a little bit uh, 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 more, then uh, you can think, uh, when is it uh, that my vote uh, will really be decisive? Because if the urn is, is really this one, then no matter what is the ball that I, uh, I put, I mean, what, what is the uh, vote? What is my vote? Uh, well, the others also will have uh, white balls. Uh, and so they, they will report uh, a, a white, uh, uh, the, the true earth is this one, okay? My, the only situation in which my uh, vote uh, is uh, uh, decisive, uh, is uh, when uh, I pick a white ball and the true urn is this one and some other guy also picks uh, the white ball, okay? So this is a very uh, low probability, but only in this case, uh, 
is my uh, vote decisive because if I uh, misreport, uh, then uh, uh, my, the, 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 the society will take uh, the wrong decision, okay? So if you work a little bit about this, uh, then you figure out that uh, then uh, um, uh, even if I pick the white ball in this case, uh, it is, uh, uh, and even in this case, even in this case, if I pick a white ball, I better report uh, that uh, it is a black ball. And as a result of this, uh, then uh, 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 society as a whole ends up taking the wrong uh, decision. Okay, so, and there are a number of cases where uh, uh, this uh, type of uh, uh, situations occur. So one interesting one is uh, in court cases uh, in the United States where in order to plead guilty a, a, a person, you should have uh, essentially the majority of the people that uh, are convinced that he is guilty. But then uh, if, uh, there is just a, it is just a, a sufficient that one person does not uh, find that person guilty and he will be discharged from everything. So then this in the end uh, uh, puts a pressure on people to, uh, even if they think uh, that that particular person is not guilty, then uh, uh, they better report he is guilty because uh, uh, they, that is the only situation which they will be uh, decisive. I mean, if all the others are convinced uh, that he is guilty and uh, 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 he is not. Uh, okay. Excuse me, Professor. Yeah. So this kind of reasoning seems a bit glitchy to me. Uh, I mean, it seems I can understand why one would make such an argument. Yeah, but I don't see how one can say that this is a rational argument. At least it sounds very arrogant. No, it's a it's a rational argument uh, from the individual point of view. Okay, so if you think, uh, uh, say, um, so imagine that uh, uh, say uh, you think uh, a person is not guilty. Okay, and you say he's not guilty then uh, the only situation in which your uh, vote is decisive uh, is if everybody else uh, is convinced uh, that uh, he is guilty and uh, you vote uh, that uh, he's not guilty, okay? So because of you, this person will go to prison, okay? Now, but if he's really guilty and uh, uh, and being guilty is an objective thing, then uh, there will be someone else uh, uh, that uh, um, uh, uh, sorry, no, well, uh, sorry, the argument was uh, a little bit different. Um, yeah, so, so um, uh, So if he is not guilty, then uh, if I report uh, that he is guilty, then uh, uh, it will not make uh, any uh, difference because there will be other people in the jury that will report that he is not guilty. Yeah, but it kind of puts an irrational, I mean, it puts, I think, excessive faith uh, in other people isn't because no, yeah, even, yeah. even in the even in the first case with the ball what i'm what what the person who's voting black even though he picked white is thinking is well um probably other people will make uh, the more straightforward choice because because that's just what people are but i myself as the more in intelligent and rational individual will pick uh, the opposite of what i should pick because in the case my vote is decisive, uh, it won't matter because the other people will make the, the correct decision. Yes, so it's yes, exactly. So indeed, uh, you should not have uh, too many rational uh, and smart people uh, in, a, <laughs> in a committee. And uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's really the, the situation, 
okay? Yeah, okay. So, I mean, but if you want, uh, I mean, this uh, case is discussed together with several other cases, is discussed in a very convincing manner in the book of uh, Kleinberg and Isley. So I really recommend you uh, have a look at this. Okay. No, I mean, I, I can see why it is rational uh, from yeah. a very subjective point of view. Um, your, okay. your, your lectures described it well, so. Okay, so uh, let me consider another situation where uh, the uh, wisdom, the crowd may not be so wise. Huh? And this is, uh, uh, goes under the name of uh, uh, rational herding, okay? Or, uh, um, uh, yes, rational herding. So, uh, so imagine that we have a situation where uh, uh, I have to choose between uh, two restaurants and one restaurant is better than the other okay and uh and i have some information and this information uh, is a noisy signal okay it's a noisy signal with that with uh, probably larger than one half tells me that indeed uh, a is better than b and with probably one minus b tells me the wrong information okay and uh uh, then uh, what should I do? Well, uh, I should behave according to my information if, uh, because I know that the probability that this information uh, is right, is larger than one half, then uh, I should follow the advice of my signal, okay? And, uh, but if I do so, you know, if I follow uh, the, this uh, recommendation of this private signal, then what I do will reveal my uh, private information. Then now imagine the situation where there are uh, many people making the same choice. They have to decide whether they want to go in restaurant A or in restaurant B. Now, Mr. K, the gay number K, may uh, have his own personal information and he may, decide to uh, uh, act upon this information, but he may also observe uh, what other people have chosen. And uh, if he observed that other people uh, uh, have chosen a, a particular restaurant, then he may consider that uh, they, they did so, that he can observe their private information, okay? And this information, may be uh, of better quality with respect to his own private signal. So essentially, um, because of this, uh, uh, what uh, uh, this, this guy may do is just to follow uh, the action of others, uh, uh, inferring the signals they, they, they received. But if this guy does so, then his action will no longer reveal uh, his own uh, information. So is the information that he received uh, gets lost, okay? Because he is not going to act according to his information, but he's going to act according to the information of the crowd, okay? And essentially you can show that uh, say it is enough uh, that the first two guys uh, get the wrong information, then everybody else uh, will end up uh, in the wrong uh, restaurant, in the worst restaurant. Okay, so this is called uh, uh, an information cascade because uh, it's, uh, it's like a, a, an avalanche where essentially all these people uh, behave in a way that completely neglects uh, uh, their own information, okay? And uh, uh, so the, this uh, set of issues which are related to uh, how we interact uh, with uh, information, as you can imagine, uh, uh, is, is a very interesting subject. And uh, because uh, as we know, there are a lot of uh, reasons why this, all these information uh, systems and social networks that we have are essentially uh, failing and giving problems uh, uh, 
and it's a this is a subject that is uh, really uh, uh, very much uh, studied, and there is a lot of other uh, uh, say uh, ideas in uh, game theory and in economics of how you can uh, describe situations where uh, you have. Uh, uh, say this collapse of trust, uh, this uh, um, or, or this type of phenomena occurring. Okay, so with this, uh, uh, I think uh, if there are some quick questions, uh, we can uh, take them. Otherwise, uh, you have a lot of material on the website. So there is a. Um, What if the individual recognizes that a collective uh, view is rational? Uh, I don't understand this question very rich one. Can you please explain a little bit better this uh, question? Maybe, okay, maybe let me, uh, uh, okay, so, Um, so in the res domain restriction, you can order the alternative not along an oriented uh, uh, line, but in a circular space uh, um, where the extreme of the political spectrum are close to each other. Uh, well, then in this case, uh, again, I think uh, that uh, the result will uh, work because essentially you will have just one maximum on this uh, circle, and then uh, uh, the same result will, uh, will hold. Then uh, um, there is a question on easy models. Uh, uh, so yes, ah, uh, so the, um, yes, yeah, so there are, uh, Many people have worked uh, with uh, spin models uh, to describe uh, uh, social choice and voting uh, and uh, opinion dynamics. Uh, and the idea is that uh, like this temperature is something uh, that is related to how rational people are. Um, but you can also interpret it in different way, uh, temperature. So uh, and this is. Uh, also explained uh, on the website. And there is, uh, so each one, the, is, is Mike is not working. Um, what if the definition of an individual's optimal decision may not be as straightforward as in most uh, simple cases? Uh, factoring complexity of individual thought uh, uh, when subject to exposure. So yes, so the, in many cases, uh, the uh, social choice, so individual choice itself uh, may be complex and individuals uh, may not have uh, a, a transitive uh, a rational preference themselves. This we discussed. Uh, and of course, uh, all these problems uh, will be even more, uh, the problems of social choice will be even more uh, uh, serious when uh, individual rationality is not there, is not assumed. Okay, but uh, what we have shown is that even if you have rational individuals, then society may behave in a very irrational manner, or the crowd may behave in a very rational, irrational manner. Okay, so I think uh, uh, if there are no other questions, uh, then uh, I, I think we can stop here. And, um, and maybe take uh, 10 minutes of break and uh, reconvene in, uh, at half past four.